Oh, I'm so in love with this room. This is the fourth floor, and you can see lots of changes have happened in the last couple of days. I've done some updates, and I want to show you all the updates that I've done, but first of all, we are going to talk about these rugs. I'm going to take you over to my sewing table and talk about these rugs because that's actually what we're doing today. I'm going to be making some throw rugs with you, and I want to talk about them first, and then we'll come back here and we'll check out the updates. Okay, so when I first started this video, just actually today about these rugs, uh, I didn't know I was going to be making this one. So this one is done a little bit differently than these three. So I'm going to show you how to make the oval rug and then how to make um, these rectangular rugs. And we are fraying the edges using the fabric itself. And for that I'm using scrap upholstery fabric. And I can't tell you what the fiber content is in these. These are just scrap fabrics that I found in the thrift store. So if you wanted to do the same as what I'm doing here, see, look at these edges here. They just naturally fray. And if you look at scrap fabric, and just check that out and see how well it will come apart for you. Okay? So this one here, I made the trim myself using some trim that I found in my stash today. So we're also going to do that. So you can make these rugs if you don't have any upholstery fabric that the, the uh, sides fray like these do. Then just find fabric that you like and then I will show you how to sew it. And then we can also add some trim. So it will work for all sorts of fabrics, not just upholstery fabric. So I thought I'd better turn the camera on because I'm going to make a change here in the ceiling beams. I don't like the size of those, so I went out and I got some bigger ones. And I might leave them unstained as well. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to be taking these ones out. I've already taken one out, and it was here. And the other two are really stuck in there, so I'm going to have to get some tools <laughs> and uh, remove those. All right, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm I'm glad I remembered because uh, it's always nice to see the before and then the after. Oh yeah, I like those way better. And you can see I dropped the ceiling down a little bit, and over here as well. Added a wooden frame around that door over there, and changed out the size of this one here. Oh dear old Rusty. <laughs> I love that little stove. I also extended the top of his chimney so he sticks out a little bit further, which is a perfect uh, space actually between the back wall because I can reach in there real easily now and just turn his light on and off. I should have added in my last clip that I what I meant by drop down the ceiling was I added tin foil up there. And then uh, I put my beams in, and then I worked in the material, and that's drywall compound I put on the very top, in between my beams. I stained these beams after uh, everything was dry. And I worked uh, paper clay over here. So more tin foil over here, and then paper clay straight over top the tin foil. And my uh, frame back there, my wooden frame around the door, uh, I glued those in and then I put paper clay around them in the back so it kind of extended that doorway out a little bit as well as framed the wooden pieces real nice. In my uh, top rail there, I just stuck that in today, this morning. And I'm going to put another one here, but I'm still not done the floor up here, so I have to wait once I get the floor figured out. And I think I'm going to be putting a bed up there. I'm not too sure yet. It might change, but yeah, once that's done, then I can put the other railing in. All right, so my rugs, these two I made, and this one here I found at a thrift store, and I think it's a mug rug. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love it. And I love the way it lays down, too. It just lays nice and flat. And it's pretty heavy. I wish I could find more of those. Uh, yeah, it was in a thrift store in the kitchen section, so that's why I'm thinking it was a mug rug. I don't, I don't believe it's a dollhouse rug, but it sure makes a beautiful dollhouse rug. That's for sure. 
But I want to show you how I make these guys. These are pretty easy, pretty fast. So let's head over to my sewing table and we'll make a couple of rugs. Okay, so I found bunches and bunches of scrap upholstery fabric in the thrift store. And I couldn't tell you what the fibers are made of. I'm no expert in fabric at all. But I saw on some of them that they have a natural, beautiful fraying ability. <laughs> uh, the edges. And I love that. I thought, oh my goodness, that could make a nice rug. So, with that being said, I just take whatever piece and I'm going to just um, chalk out an outline and I'm going to cut around it. So, so what I'll do is I'll use this side here. I want to use both these colors in it. So I'm just going to turn it over and I want to make an oval rug, an oval shape. So I found my basket has an oval shape on the bottom and then I'm going to draw around it with my chalk. professional at work here. <laughs> professional rug maker at work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful shape. Okay, so now I need my scissors. Okay, I'm just going to cut this out. And cut this. Okay, now I need my sewing machine. I'm going to just place it right now. I'm going to sew around the chalk outline. And I'm using dark thread. I actually have brown thread in here, which is good. You can't really see the thread in these fabrics once they're sewn. You can't really see them. Actually, you have to look for the thread <laughs> so you don't cut. So you don't cut it. Okay, are we ready to go here? I felt like I kind of went off the lines there. Oh no. No, I stayed in. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to cut, uh, let's see. I'm going to cut about a quarter inch around the thread line. The reason why I sewed around the chalk line is because once I start fraying this, the fray would continue on forever. So I put the thread there so it stops where the thread is. So you can see my sewing line right there. All the way around. So now I'm going to take something pointy and I'm just going to go in and pull up. It's actually quite fun once you get started. <laughs> Ripping out all those threads pretty fun. I enjoy it. Um, when I said pull up, I should have thought about it. The threads are going in different directions, especially on these oval oval rugs. So you have to, when you start feeling resistance, on some of them I could pull up, but on some of them they were giving me too much resistance. So I'd, I would look and see, oh yeah, see the thread's going that way, going to the left. So I'll pull, and that makes it a lot easier. So you'll just have to look at your, you'll know once you start. Um, which way to pull them in. There we go, I made it all the way around and if you look at this, this side is just as beautiful as this side, I think anyway. I love the muted colors on this side and if you think about it, if you put a bed on top of here saying you'd only have this part out, or this part, whatever part you want, <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Either, either side would work. So now you want to trim down the uh, threads of course, and you'll want to use uh, sharp scissors for this. So this little guy here which also is reversible, I think. I took it from this piece right here. Another scrap fabric. So I'm going to use the same fabric. I just cut a piece off here. I want to make one, but I want to make it out of this here. I love these colors in here. So I want to make a rectangular shape. 
So again, I'm going to do a chalk outline. I'll do it on the reverse side. So I'm just going to draw around this little box. Okay, and I don't know how long I want it yet, so I'm just going to cut on those chalk lines. This one I'm going to sew on the inside of those lines. I don't want it so wide, so I'm just going to cut on the inside of those. So you can see this one here, I just frayed the ends and I cut as close as I could to the, to the thread line on the other sides there. And that's all I did for that one. So I'm going to leave myself a fray line. Come in a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to turn. Maybe I'll go a little further. Turn it and go straight down. And turn. Turn again. Okay, so I'm going to cut along those thread lines just on the sides, close to the thread line. Okay, the other thread line is barely visible. There it is. So I'm going to leave myself right there because I want the ends to be frayed. Now I will fray the ends. I think I'm going to have to iron that one, but that looks pretty cool. I like it. And I can picture that in front of a bed already. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like them. And you can see any size, any shape will work. So we've made some pretty cool rugs, I think, for our tree. Pretty awesome. Now look at this one. Oh my goodness, I love. This one though, I will have to tear off the backing that they have on here. It shouldn't be a problem though. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll turn this one into a rug and then I'll come back and show you what I got. So there's my sew line there. And you have to sew around all four sides because if you don't, then the fabric could just fray and fall apart. So doing a sew line will stop it from falling apart. So all of them have been sewn on all sides. I don't want to fray the ends on this one. I want to add a little bit of a different look to it. So I was looking in my stash just now and I found, oh, this is trim for some sort of thing. You can see the little thing. I had a whole bunch of it. The only thing I don't like is the color because it's a little bit too white for me. So I took a piece just now and I tea stained it. So it's just a tea bag and hot water and put it on there. I like that a lot better. Okay, just dipped it in the tea, wrung it out and now I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer and I'm going to iron it as well because it's, it's not sitting so flat. Okay, so let's sew this together. It's still a little bit damp, but I'm anxious to get started here. And I cut it a little bit too long because I noticed on my other one, I was losing the end uh, strings there. Uh, they were falling off, like on the end here. So I just wanted to make sure that, that doesn't happen on this one. I can trim it up when I'm done. Now you usually sew backwards, like on the wrong side, but I'm going to sew on the right side because I want to see what I'm doing. And like I said, the, the thread kind of disappears on these fabrics on these upholstery fabrics. I just want to make sure that I got those sitting right as I sew. Alright. Oh, it would help to turn it on. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, that's so pretty. Yay! Oh, that's awesome. All right, and see, I didn't know that was going to happen because um, I didn't even know I had that stuff in my stash until I went looking for a solution because I didn't really like the ends of this carpet here and I didn't want to fray them like these ones. So that's awesome. All right, we made some pretty awesome rugs today for our tree. I'm calling it our tree now because I've got you guys uh, so involved with me here. That's awesome. 
All right, so I'm going to go try this out in there and see how it looks. So I tried this one in here and it doesn't go so well. And I think it's because I know the characters that are coming in here. It's not going to fit with them. So I think what I'll do, I'll leave these ones in here for now. It could change because I'm going to be making more rugs in the near future. But this one probably will end up down here. And this is going to be mom and dad's room down here. So that that might work. We'll see. I'm happy I made it today though. I really love I love the colors of this and I love the the frills on this side. I think this is turning out a little bit better than I had first imagined. Well, a whole lot better. I shouldn't say a little. <laughs> I'm really in love with this room. I, my heart sings every time I come in here and look and check this out. Yay, got more lights in there. I didn't string any lights this time. I actually went out and I got some more of these. I won't show you because it's super bright and it's a bit blinding. So what I did to tone that down was just put masking tape over the lights to tone it down a bit. I got a package of three for $10. Uh, I got them at um, Canadian Tire. I'm in Canada, so... You can get them anywhere though. I've seen them on Amazon. I'm pretty sure Walmart carries them as well. Alright guys, I think we'll end the video here. And as always, when the next video is available, it will be popping up on your screen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Gotta take a look at Rusty before you go. Rusty, my happy little pot belly stove. <laughs> With its finished flames. Alright guys, after I finished filming, I, I made a couple more, and these only took me like five minutes, not even. I just sewed around four sides and added the frill on the end. Super easy. Super fun. I love these little guys here. Anyway, I want to say that uh, if you've been watching my channel, this channel and my other channel, I will always, always, always give credit where it's due because I believe in that. I believe in community spirit and I don't need to take credit for things. I really don't. Um, if I get an idea from somebody, I will definitely let you know. And I'm sure that fabric rugs like this, like for Indians and stuff, has been out there probably longer than I've been alive. And uh, it's, if you work with fabrics and doll houses, it wouldn't take you very long to figure that out anyway. Anyway, I hope that has simplified making rugs for you and then you'll be able to put rugs in your dollhouse. I know for myself rugs have always been a dilemma. Um, I don't know why because you know I'm a crafter and this should have come to me a long time ago but um, rugs have been a dilemma just like stairs have been and thankfully this tree has been teaching me so many new tricks. I'm in love with this tree. I'm learning a lot and I hope you guys are too get like getting ideas and just being able to run with them and make something awesome and fantastical. I hope this was fun and I hope you fill up your dollhouse with some little homemade rugs.